Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. Uh, today I'm pretty pumped because I get to try the uh, the two bottles from the Legacy series from Michter's. So I'm talking about Shanks and Bombergers. Both of these are the 2023 releases. And I wanted to cover these because as we are getting into the thick of 2024, hopefully this will give you some indication of whether or not these should be on your radar for the 2024 releases. So we'll start with the Shanks because it's the lower proof and then we'll do the, the Bombergers after that. So let me get these poured and then I'll talk a bit about what these are, where they come from and, and what the whole uh, you know philosophy is behind these two things. Give me a sec. Okay, so these two are, like I said, they're from the Legacy series coming out of Michter's and uh, Shanks is named after the individual uh, who started the original distillery back in the 1700s. Uh, Bombergers is named after the original distillery's name itself before it was changed to Michter's. So let's take these one at a time. The one thing that both of these have in common is malted rye for 2023. So it's malted rye in both of these, but the philosophy behind these are uh, pretty different. Both of them get a little quirky in the uh, in the wood department, in the, uh, you know, talking about the barrels, the oak that's used. So with Shanks, the one we're gonna start with, this one's a lower proof. It comes in at 91.2. It is not age stated. Uh, which means it's it's got to be at least four years old. It's classified as just a whiskey, not a bourbon, not a rye, not a straight Kentucky bourbon, nothing like that, just whiskey. And they say there's a uh, significant amount of rye in the mash, but they don't tell us exactly what the mash bill is made of. And we do know that there's malted rye in there too. And then when it comes to the barreling process, so they've used oak that was like left out and seasoned extra long. So uh, this is something that I, I feel like it's overlooked a lot but the process of getting your wood ready for you know being turned into a barrel for your cooper uh, to do their work, the process before that often gets overlooked. And some distilleries have experimented uh, quite a bit with that process. You know, uh, back in the day, Buffalo Trace did a huge experiment where they were taking different planks from different portions of the oak trees to try and find out if there was even a specific spot on the tree that lended itself to having better oak for better bourbon. So it's not unheard of for distilleries to experiment with that kind of thing. But what Mictors has done here is they, they said, hey, we want the, 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 the planks to season longer out in the open air. So what happens is after the uh, sawyers have come in, they've cut down the trees, they've, they've sawn the logs and they send them off to the lumber yard. Now they sit in a lumber yard and what happens is uh, you want them to dry out and part of that process is actually just constantly hosing down the planks. They're exposed to the elements. But the longer that they're out there and you're hosing them down, it's stripping out uh, really tannic astringent notes. The lignans inside the wood are getting broken down. A uh, good healthy fungus is getting into the wood and helping convert things to things like vanillins and sugars so that the oak gets sweeter and more mature as it sits out there in the open air before it gets sent off to your cooper and turned into a barrel. So that's something that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. So kudos, I'm excited to try this just because I think it's neat that they're experimenting with stuff like that over at Michter's. So let's get on into this. This is uh, the Shanks. Now I should uh, note the MSRP for this bottle is $110. So it's not super cheap, but these bottles are also not like highly allocated. So they're, they're sort of available, I think, if you wanted to get your hands on these, but you may have to pay a secondary uh, market price for them if you really didn't want them. Cause they're not, they're not easy to find either, but they're not highly allocated. But the secondary prices don't tend to be like super jacked up because these don't have like that, the huge cult following and reputation that some of the more allocated bottles from other distilleries have. So. The, the markup on them is insane. You might see a markup of you know $150 for the bottle instead of 110. The notes on this, um, real sweet and spicy. Oh, I should also note that um, some of it was aged in French oak barrels too, which tends to be a lot more, more like woody, really thick oak tannins. So the nose, I get tons of brown sugar on this, lots of oak. And like if you just popped the cap off of a bottle of vanilla extract and just sniffed it right off the top there. And I get this uh, oatmeal butterscotch cookie note too. You know, you ever have oatmeal scotchies? Dang, those are good. And man, just a ton of oak. I'm excited to try this. Cheers. Man, I tell you what, if you like sweet and oak, man, this is for you. Right up front, I get those like little butterscotch chocolate chips that you use in baking right up front on the palate, very sweet and creamy as well. And then a tidal wave of oak, these dry sugary tannins that just roll across your tongue and down the back. And then in the finish, I get a ton of maple syrup, you know, fresh from the sugar shack, maple syrup and oak all on the finish. Mmm. 
Okay, that's really good. <laughs> I like that a lot. Man, the more I sit with this, the more it reminds me of Michter's 10 year rye in a lot of ways. Just tons of oak and brown sugar on the tail end of the palate and into the finish. That maple syrup note, the sh fresh from the sugar shack, man, I adore that. Part, part of me is like holding off before I take another sip because I'm just letting that finish ride out. And it is riding in a way that I didn't expect a 91.2 proof whiskey to finish. I didn't, I didn't expect it to last that long on the finish. That's what she said. Booyah! Man, it really is a tidal wave of oak. Sweet brown sugar. It, I wouldn't say that it's exceptionally complex, but if you like sweet oak, you might really get down with this. And I do. I think that's pretty good. And they're not lying when I say this, that they say there's a healthy amount of rye in there because it does, like I said, it reminds me of their 10-year rye in a lot of ways, which is a great bottle, by the way. If you can get this at $110 at MSRP, I think this is like really stinking good. I'd give that a uh, 7.8. If I can ever find that at MSRP, I'll probably pick that up because I like that a lot. Let's move on. Bombergers. All right, this one is 108 proof, so a little bit higher in the proof point. This one is uh, classified as a bourbon, uh, non-age stated, so at least four years. The MSRP for this bottle is $100. On secondary, again, you're probably looking at about $150. It's named after the old Pennsylvania distillery before it was Michter's in Kentucky. And again, we've got malted rye in the mash bill. But one of the things that's interesting about this is that it's a blend of a couple of different whiskeys as far as we know. Uh, one of them is whiskey that's been aged in chinkapin barrels. So chinkapin is a, it's a walnut. So it's a certain species of oak uh, classified as a walnut. Not overly common, but that could be why we have this wonderful walnut color on here though. Now that chinkapin was air, like seasoned out in the open air for I think it said three years. Dang, <laughs> dang. And then it was toasted and charred after that for their barrels. So because the oak is different, not the French oak, we got chinkapin in here. I wonder how it's gonna differ from Shanks. And this is also a higher proof point. And probably more corn in the mash because uh, it's called a bourbon. The other one was just a whiskey. A little uh, campfire smokiness on the nose actually. And on the nose, I'm getting this um, butter pecan ice cream note. You know, like creamy butter pecan ice cream. And I love that. There's also a sort of, um, I wanna say a vegetal note in here too. I'm trying to figure out what I would associate it with though. Because I know vegetables kind of a broad thing to say. Almost like an herbal tea of some kind. Very interesting nose. Let's try it. Cheers. First thing I'm noticing, the mouthfeel is a lot creamier and oilier than the last one, than Shanks was. That could be due to the proof point. It's also clinging to the sides of the glass the way the Shanks wasn't. So a little bit thicker in the mouth. And this is strange because I'm getting some... <laughs> I'm getting some notes that you don't typically get with one another. I'm definitely getting this sort of herbal black tea note in there and uh, a certain spicy oak quality, but I'm also getting like movie theater popcorn, which is strange. It's a strange combination. A little bit of clove and anise as well. Man, as that finish rides out, I think of that movie theater popcorn a lot. That's different. I gotta say, this is sort of like a, a pour to experience. Not a pour that I would that I'd pour for myself, by myself, you know, frequently. And this is something that you would share with somebody to be like, hey, try this out, see what you think about this. You know what I mean? It's certainly peculiar, it's certainly singular and one of a kind. I don't dislike it, but it is for sure something to experience. I'll give it a flat 7.0 because it is singular. It really does try something new and I think that's cool. I love when uh, distilleries do that. But if uh, between the two, the one that I would just sit down and sit by myself and enjoy, definitely the Shanks. I think that's the one I would go for. But these were super interesting. I think uh, if I learned anything today, it's that the next time I see Shanks available for a fair price, I'll probably pick it up. Based off of my tasting notes, the price points, and the information that we know about these two bottles, which one would you be most likely to pick up yourself? And if you have these, do you share the same thoughts and opinions on them that I had? Please let me know in the comments below. Big shout out to all of you for tuning into the video and watching it. I really appreciate you guys. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for more whiskey content and check out the link in the uh, description to our Discord where you can join our community. Totally free to do. And uh, we got a lot of great people in there and we just enjoy each other's company. Get in there and introduce yourself. Uh, big shout out to my Patreon supporters for helping me fund the bottles that I get to pick up and review here on the channel. Really appreciate you guys and gals. Cheers, my friends. May you live richly and get better with age. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.